Good evening, and welcome to a special session where WHO's Medical Eligibility Criteria for Contraceptive Use Guideline, the fifth edition of this guideline, will be launched for the Americas. It's my great pleasure to be invited to this event, and I want to thank specifically Dr. Suzanne Soraya and Dr. Rodolfo Gomez for this invitation. My name is Mary Lynn Gaffield, and along with my colleague, Mario Festin, we work for the Department of Reproductive Health and Research in Geneva. So thank you very much for the invitation. I am Mario Festin. I also work here in the Department of Reproductive Health and Research in the WHO headquarters. And we are very happy to introduce to you these tools and other materials that you could use for family planning in your region. This evening, during the session, we are going to give an overview of the latest edition of the Medical Eligibility Criteria for Contraceptive Use, how it was developed, and highlight the important changes that appear in this fifth edition. Then Mario will talk about the latest edition of the MEC wheel. He'll also talk about the Family Planning Training Resource Package, or TRP, as we call it in English. And then I will also talk about updates that will be undertaken for the Selected Practice Recommendations, Guideline, or SPR, as well as the Global Handbook. So without further ado, I'd like to share with you an image of the various tools, guidelines, that we prepare at WHO, which are continually updated, and thanks to all of you in constant demand. Now, as we mentioned, we'll really be focusing on the medical eligibility criteria guideline for this talk, but we'll also be talking about the MEC wheel and some of the other tools and guidelines that appear in this picture. And as some of you may know, the guidelines are continually updated through a routine synthesis of the scientific evidence through what we call the Continuous Identification of Research Evidence, or SEER. Now in June this year, we released the fifth edition of the Medical Eligibility Criteria for Contraceptive Use Guideline in English. The purpose of this guideline is to provide evidence-based recommendations for who can safely use a contraceptive method. The fifth edition offers nearly 2,000 recommendations for now 25 methods of contraception. And these recommendations are presented for women with pre-existing medical conditions or for certain personal characteristics and also for women according to health problems that may be important when delivering contraception to them. This guideline was developed through a consensus-driven process over the course of three global consultations that involved a, a gathering of a guideline development group where systematic reviews of the scientific evidence were reviewed, the quality of the evidence within those reviews was assessed, and throughout the entire process, WHO's rigorous um, requirements for guideline development were adhered to. We're very, very grateful for the experts that were part of the process that were from, that were from Latin America, and in particular, we're very grateful for our colleagues in PAHO for contributing to this effort. Now, just before we begin, I'd like to review with everyone how these recommendations are presented in the MEC. We use a four-category scheme that ranges from a one, where there are no restrictions of the method, a two, where the method can generally be used, three, where generally the method should not be provided, 
and a condition four, which represents an unacceptable health risk to the woman. Now, in settings where there is limited clinical judgment available, category one and two conditions indicate that the method can be provided. Category three or four conditions indicate that that method should not be provided to the woman. And in certain situations, we offer different criteria depending upon whether the method is being initiated or continued. And these are particularly relevant when we're talking about interuterine devices, um, for example. Now back to the MEC 5th edition, which we are launching today. I want to note that there are a variety of highlights that will be important for you to uh, be aware of as you share this guideline in your settings. For overall, the fifth edition presents an opportunity to further expand contraceptive options to women. And this has been done through the addition of four new methods of contraception to this guideline, which I will review shortly. Further, women who breastfeed now have more contraceptive options during the postpartum period, including immediately after they deliver their child. Last year, in July 2014, at the International AIDS Conference, we early released recommendations for women who live with HIV, including women who are taking antiretroviral therapy, also women who are at high risk of acquiring the infection. And they now also have more contraceptive options. And these recommendations are included in the release of the entire MEC. And lastly, we want to underscore that through the consultative process to develop the guideline, our experts reaffirmed that adolescents can use all methods of contraception including interuterine devices and contraceptive implants. Just to review and to show the various methods that are available in the MEC and now the fifth edition of the guideline, you will note that there are many combined estrogen progestogen containing methods that are uh, available in this guideline as well as many progestogen only methods that are available. I want to note that the four new methods include for progestogen only contraception we now offer uh, recommendations for the subcutaneous injectable depomedroxy progestogen acetate. We also offer recommendations for a levonorgestrel releasing implant, otherwise known as sino implant. We also include recommendations for another method of emergency contraception, specifically uloprestal acetate. And lastly, we include recommendations for the progesterone releasing vaginal ring. I'll go into greater detail in the next slides. Depomedroxyprogestogen acetate subcutaneous injectable, or otherwise known as DMPA-SC for subcutaneous, is a injectable method that can be not only self-administered, but also administered by a health worker. And after review of the scientific evidence on the safety of this method, as well as the safety for women with medical conditions and particular characteristics, our guideline group determined that all recommendations for the subcutaneous injectable should follow the intermuscular injectable recommendations. So this is a new method that you can include in your programs if it's not already there. In addition, Sino Implant 2 which is a implant, subcutaneous implant, that is manufactured in China. It releases levonorgestrel, it's two rods. It's uh, very similar to Jadel, which may be uh, more widely known in your region. 
This, now me this method is now also included in the MEC 5th edition, and the guideline review group determined that all recommendations for this implant should follow the levonorgestrel and etonogestrel implant recommendations. So this is another method that can be included. In addition, under emergency contraception pills, we now include recommendations for ulipristal acetate. This is a single-dose method that is very effective up to 20, 120 hours after unprotected sexual intercourse. It delays, its mechanism action is through the delay of ovulation, and according to our review of the scientific evidence, all women can use ulipristal acetate for emergency contraception. So this, for example, includes women who have a variety of the conditions listed below, including women who have repeatedly used emergency contraception. Lastly, the fourth new method added to this guideline is the progesterone releasing vaginal re and this is a method that is specifically designed for women who are actively breastfeeding and it's important to note that the woman needs to be breastfeeding for at least four episodes per day. Something unique about this method is it delivers a natural progesterone. Unlike the progestogen or synthetic methods um, that are also in the guideline, many of you may already be familiar with this method because it was developed in Latin America and is currently registered in at least nine countries. And now WHO has included this method in its guidance with the recommendation that all women who are actively breastfeeding can use this method without restriction from four weeks post-delivery. Now, as far as other new recommendations, which your uh, programs may be very interested in implementing, it's important to note that women who breastfeed in the post and who are postpartum now have more options, and specifically, if in the immediate postpartum period, women who breastfeed are now able to use the progestogen only pill, otherwise I think known as mini pill in many settings, and also women are immediately able to have a levonorgestrel or tonogestrel releasing implant inserted. And just to note here, you can see in the table that I've highlighted in yellow the number two for both of these methods. So that indicates that this method can be offered to women. In previous editions, these, these methods were category three. Also, I want you to note in the lower table that now women who breastfeed, who they are now eligible during the first 48 hours to have a levonorgestrel IUD inserted, as well as currently they can have a copper IUD inserted. So these are important things to consider for postnatal service delivery as well as labor and delivery um, settings. In addition, I want to revisit that women who are living with HIV um, or at very high risk of HIV can use combined estrogen progesterone releasing contraceptives or progesterone only contraceptions without restrictions and that the levonorgestrel IUD can generally also be used. However, if the woman has severe disease, um, this method, the IUD, should generally be avoided. Also, to let you know that for women who take ART, they are generally eligible to use all hormonal contraceptive methods. And it's also very important whenever we're talking about family planning to note that the consistent and correct use of condoms, male or female, is critical to protect against STIs and HIV for the prevention of HIV transmission. With the new addition of the medical eligibility criteria for contraceptive use, 
we have also updated the MEC wheel, which is a very popular handy tool. It contains the MEC uh, for starting use of contraceptive methods. For those of you who are familiar, who are not yet familiar with the MEC wheel, it contains some selected methods which are highlighted by the red circles and it is cross tabulated with medical or health conditions which are highlighted in green and the category which was earlier which were earlier mentioned are highlighted with the yellow box for some conditions we might have to specify some clarifications so a comments section is included in the back of the wheel this wheel is distributed through the WHO website, and we will mention that later. Another important resource for program managers and even for providers is the Family Planning Training Resource Package. This is an online tool for trainers so that you can design, implement, evaluate family planning training based on evidence-based guidelines. These were developed using the MEC, the SPR, and the other WHO guidelines and tools. The Family Planning Training Resource Package is very useful in training programs both in, for pre-service and for in-service, both in the public and the private sectors. Since its launch three or four years ago, we have added many new modules, the latest of which are the modules on emergency contraception for providers and for pharmacists, and a module on the standard days method, or SDM. We are translating this into French for all of the modules, and we are planning for the Spanish and Portuguese translations. The Family Planning Training Resource Package has very many modules now, and you could see them listed in the middle of the slide. And it includes, aside from modules on specific contraceptive methods, there are also modules on what are the benefits of family planning, on counseling, and how to use the WHO guidelines and tools. Each module in the Family Planning Training Resource Package is quite comprehensive. It includes a listing of competency-based objectives at the beginning of the web page, and it includes a session plan, a facilitator's guide, PowerPoint slides, uh, evaluation tools, references, and even role-play sessions. These may be used as is, but you are given the freedom to adopt this into your own settings and to adjust for the audience, be it advanced providers or general providers or even for community health workers. We are also in the process of updating our counseling tools on family planning. This is the decision-making tool, which is the one on the top, which is a clinic-based counseling tool. And it is uh, quite comprehensive that includes very detailed information for uh, the clients, with one side designed for the client and the other side designed to, pro to guide the counselor in providing information. There is a simpler version of this decision-making tool, which is the guide to family planning for community health workers. We also adapted the tools, the counseling tools, for persons living with HIV, and we call this the reproductive choices and family planning for, pers for people living with HIV. The guide for family planning has been translated into Spanish and to French, and these are available at WHO. Thank you, Mario. I'd like to now share with you 
what we are doing with the Selected Practice Recommendations for Contraceptive Use, or SPR. Currently, we're undertaking a revision of the second edition, and we anticipate that the release of the third edition will be available next spring. We hope to immediately uh, translate this document into both Spanish and Portuguese. Just to give you a flavor of what to anticipate, we have reviewed all the evidence underpinning the recommendations, and we're going to release new recommendations related to the contraceptive patch, the combined vaginal ring, and we're adding new recommendations related to how to initiate regular contraception after the use of an emergency contraceptive pill. And finally, I'd like to give you an update of our planned revision of the Global Handbook for Family Planning. This is a very popular resource for providers. It was developed in 2007 and was recently updated in 2011. We are now undertaking another revision of this highly popular document. The revision will include all of the recommendations for the MEC 5th edition, as well as those that I just mentioned related to the Selected Practice Recommendation Guideline. In addition, this revision will offer us a unique opportunity to ensure that relevant chapters within this handbook include the latest WHO guidance related to um, the workforce that can uh, offer family planning services or uh, related to the task shifting guideline that was released in 2013. We're also going to ensure that recommendations related to the delivery of information and contraceptive services following a human rights-based approach that was released in uh, 2014, that these recommendations will be included. And then we'll ensure also that WHO's latest recommendations related to HIV counseling, the delivery of postnatal services, gender-based violence are also included. And lastly, I'd like to share with all of you um, our Twitter information, how you can follow us, our website. If you have questions about these guidelines, you can email us at hrxinfo at whoint, and then also to share that copies of the MEC 5th edition can be downloaded from the address above. We're endeavoring to, as soon as possible, ensure that this guidance is available in Spanish and Portuguese. Thank you very much. Once again, we'd like to thank our colleagues for inviting us and organizing this special session where we can share with you WH's latest guidelines and tools that support family planning programs. Please do not hesitate to contact us in the future, and we look forward to issuing these guidelines and tools into Spanish and Portuguese in the very near future. Thank you very much, and we look forward to hearing from you, and have a good day.